this well. We began talking about prayer last week and focusing on, on a prayer of Daniel that is recorded in Daniel chapter 9. And how do we know that Daniel was a praying man? How do we know that? I sent out a text to many of you that you probably got on Friday afternoon. By the way, if you're not on our text list and you'd like to be, just let me know and be glad to, to add you. But the text that we sent out from Daniel chapter 6 said that Daniel got on his knees three times a day to pray. Remember, Daniel is probably 85 or so years old. Prayer is so important to this man. This man has got some age on him, but he physically got on his knees to pray. Some of us find it annoying to bow our heads for 30 seconds to pray. But even at his age, Daniel got on his knees to pray. Prayer was a priority for Daniel. How do I know? Between you and the Lord, when is the last time that you got on your knees and prayed to the Lord? When is the last time you did that? Daniel did it three times a day. And, between, and, and maybe, you know, some of the problems in our nation perhaps are intended to drive Christians to their knees. Desperate to hear from God. And I think you know by now that we do like to encourage from time to time when it comes to God's Word. But I would be a sorry excuse of a preacher if I ever told you that cream puff Christianity will not be around for long. Jesus has said that, you know, the weak and tears would be together for a while, but would eventually be separated. And, and that is the real from the artificial, the true possessors of the Holy Spirit from those who profess to have the Holy Spirit, those who are for Christ and those who are not. But you see, what is in here really works its way out. And things like this virus and, and the things like isolation and so forth, it really reveals what's in the heart. And Jesus said in Matthew 15, 18, the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. You see, my words originate from my heart, whether it's anger or love or jealousy or joy, what's in my heart is revealed by the words that I speak, or in these days as we use our phones a lot, the words that are in my heart are revealed by the words that I type. Daniel's focus, however, is on the Lord. And unless I miscounted between on Daniel chapter 3 and Daniel chapter 9 between verses 3 and 19, I counted the use of the word Lord God 28 times. I wonder, how many times a day do you mention the word Lord or God in an exalting man? Again, what's in the heart works its way out on the top. How often do you use the name God, the Lord, Christ, Jesus? And this morning, I'm not going all the way back through the history here of what we looked at last week. But remember, Daniel and God's people had been in captivity in Babylon. And Daniel is reading a scroll in which Jeremiah the prophet wrote that God's people would be in captivity for 70 years. And Daniel now is reading this prophecy and he realizes that this time period is almost up. And so the reading of this prophecy prompts Daniel to pray. And I'll mention this. As Daniel read prophecy, he realized that God had a timeline of events. You see, as Christians, it's important for you and for me to study God's Word. We need to realize that God has a timeline of events for the church as well. We need to know what's ahead. We don't need to look around today in despair because it's all in here in God's Word. And because God's Word is more current than any newspaper, any news headlines, and Christ has told us to be aware of the signs of the times. I wonder, do you know what is next on God's timeline? 
timetable. Do you know where you fit into God's future plan? Do you know what God expects of you until His return? And we're going to get more into prophecy towards the end of this chapter, by the way. But when Daniel read God's Word, he applied. He knew that something big was about to happen. King Cyrus would take the throne and release the Jews who had been in captivity to return to their land and rebuild what had been destroyed. Daniel is praying about this. So let's pick up now as we're taking this verse by verse in Daniel chapter 9. You know, we need to read God's Word to understand. Too many today want a microwavable chicken nugget Christianity, and that may be okay for the crowd of green pups over there who fall to pieces when things happen in life. But if we want to grow, then we must eat and we must mature and we must become patient and read God's Word expecting Him to speak to us. And let's do that now. As Daniel has read Jeremiah's scroll and he realizes the 70 years are almost up in Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. And Daniel says, And I set my face unto the Lord God, to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love Him and to them that keep His commandments. Daniel knows that he needs to pray. But what we first see here in verse 3 is Daniel preparing to pray. He doesn't just rush into it. You see in sports, maybe in some big football game perhaps, players may prepare right before to get ready for it. You think about a lot of you are Clemson Tiger fans. And the Clemson football team, you know, they, they come down and right before uh, entering the field, they touch the rock and they run down the hill. It's kind of preparing for the game. Well, Daniel is preparing to have an encounter with God. In one sense, we do go to God and we talk to Him because of the close relationship that we have. But at the same time, Daniel knew that we do not approach God like we do a neighbor across the street or a buddy at the bowling alley. God is holy and you and me are not. And so Daniel is prepared to meet with God. He's preparing his heart as he prays to God. And we see at least three key words here in verse 3 that sort of signify Daniel's preparation. And I'm going to use these words set, supplications, and sackcloth for just a few moments. First, Daniel says, I set my face unto the Lord God. That is, when Daniel began to pray, he turned to God. He, he faced God, if you will. He focused on God. His mind and heart were set on God. You see, sometimes when we pray, we're focused on the wrong things. The words may be sometimes coming out, but our minds are a thousand miles away. Perhaps right after church today, you'll be hungry. And something, some delicious plate of food is set before you. And you'll supposedly be giving thanks and grace to the Lord. But instead of setting our faces unto God, sometimes our minds and our bellies are set on eating the food that is before us. You know, one of the reasons why people are so weak spiritually is that we have our faces turned towards so many things, the wrong things. Maybe television. Maybe, uh, could be anything. But if you want to get serious about prayer, then you need to set your eyes unto the Lord God. This world is so distracted. There's so many things out there that can catch your attention. They're constantly flashing around us to think about, 
to distract us. And I know by experience and by God's Word that our spiritual life is weak because our prayer life is weak. And our prayer life is weak because our faces are not set on the Lord like Daniel's was. Our homes, our schools, our jobs, our nation, our whole life, the entirety of your life on this earth would be so much better if we set our faces unto the Lord. I was talking to somebody this week, and not that those whose faces are set upon the Lord do not have trouble, not that those whose faces are set towards the Lord do not experience problems, because we know we do, but because you are scared at the Creator, because your face is set on the one who is in control and is so powerful and is so great, that problem over there isn't so big anymore because my face, my eyes are set on the Lord. I read something this week that said something like, why wish upon a star when you can pray to the one who created the one? I ask you this morning, are you seeking God's face? When you pray, is it more flippant and purr, filled with selfish requests and meaningless words? You know, Daniel took approaching holy God in prayers and honor. And as a, it's a great privilege. And so he made sure that he prepared his heart for this encounter with the Lord as he was about to begin to pray. Do you look at prayer that way? And I'll say this, this message today is for those who want to grow. This message is for those who earnestly desire to seek God in prayer. This message is for those who want to see God work in their lives, in their families' lives. And if you're satisfied with where you are, if you're content to do your own thing, then so be it. If everything from if everything else, from trips to the beach or Running errands around town is essential to you, but prayer is not essential, then that's your business. But don't expect to grow. But Daniel was a man who was threatened. But pray anyway, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. And this is the scripture that I sent out. Remember, Daniel, a decree had went out to the land, and Daniel prays. The Bible says Daniel went into his house and the windows of his upper room opened toward Jerusalem. And three times a day he got on his knees praying and gave thanks to his God. Your name may not be Daniel this morning, but as God speaking, we are to set our face unto the Lord God and pray. Secondly and quickly, we next see supplications. Or that Daniel set his face unto the Lord to seek by prayer, supplications, earnest crying is what we see here. Humble pleading before the Lord. How about your prayers? Do you think you're okay with that? So even if you do pray, it's usually pretty superficial. You mumble a few words and that's kind of the end of it. No one knows for sure, but this is an interesting thought. You see, the first year of King Darius was about the same time that Daniel was thrown into the lion's den because of his pride. Could it be that this prayer, this very prayer that we're studying in Daniel chapter 9, is the exact prayer that causes Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den? Again, no one knows for sure, but it's an interesting thought. Third, the third word we mentioned was sackcloth. The Bible says with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Sackcloth was a hairy garment, maybe like camel's hair, turned inside out, and it would scratch. The bristles of that camel's hair would scratch and rub against a person's skin. This was showing repentance. How sorry Daniel was. Showing confession. Forsaking of sins. Daniel was displaying a holy attitude towards sin. The problem we have today is that we tend to proudly prance around in our sin. 
And we think we have no sin, but 1 John 1 8 says, If we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. We are sinners. Every single person in this room, from up here at this pulpit to these pews, outside in the cars, and all around this county, this nation, around the world, are sinners. And Daniel came before God with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And this fasting was not an attempt to score points with God like a pupil with his school teacher, but a way to deny self, a way to concentrate on the spiritual realm. Fasting is not proving to God, proving something to God, or or to show people I'm a spiritual giant. I'm fasting today, but to privately place yourself in a position to where we can hear God more clearly. Church, I hope you're paying attention to Daniel's prayer. Remember, as we said last week, the fervent prayers of a righteous man or a righteous woman are powerful and effective. Things you may think are falling apart all around you. Sometimes you look around, especially some of the bigger cities, and you see things going on there. You may have some things going on in your own home and it just seems like things are falling apart. Maybe your best friend is experiencing a difficult time right now. But you know, even with all this falling apart around us, are God's people really getting serious about prayer and I think so. I haven't really seen it. I see a lot of people in the streets vandalizing things, but I haven't seen a lot of people on their knees like Daniel praying. Daniel says, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel will have an encounter, a meeting with God. How about you, deacon? Are you praying? How about you, husband or wife or father or mother or woman, teenager? Are you praying? I mean, really praying. Dan, at his age of 85 or 86, got on his knees and prayed three times a day. I wonder what your prayer life looks like. What's in here comes out. And if you rarely speak to Christ, what does that say about what's in you today? Is, it, is your heart filled with so much junk that you rarely even think of Christ? I wonder this morning, as we play this song in just a moment,